Hey everyone, welcome to my Redis tutorial series, where in this video we're going to learn what Redis is, when to use it, how to install it, how to connect to a Redis client, and basic Redis operations such as setting, retrieving, and deleting keys. So to begin, what is Redis? Well, Remote Dictionary Server, or Redis, is a NoSQL data store that can be used as a cache, database, and more. Redis is fast because it uses memory as its main storage, writing to disk only for persistence. Redis also supports rich data types when compared to typical key value data stores, making it applicable to a variety of use cases. So when do we use Redis? Well, as Redis is memory oriented, it is great for working with real-time data that is frequently updated. For example, Redis would be a great choice for displaying the latest user's posts on a website that is frequently receiving new user's posts. This is not only because Redis uses memory as its main storage, but also because it provides some excellent data structures for such a use case. To install Redis, follow the instructions for the specific operating system by following a link I provided in the description. It is recommended to install Redis from source, which you'll also read about in that link. But once Redis is installed, it can be started by running the command redis server. Once Redis is running, it can be stopped by entering control C into the console. Now, let's open up a second terminal to work with our Redis server. Let's get our Redis server up and running again. And now, in the second terminal, let's run the command redis cli. Redis cli, or Redis command line interface, is a terminal program used to interact with the Redis server. Running this command should open up the prompt with our local host and the port number that Redis is working on. By default, External programs speak with Redis using a TCP socket on port 6379. Now, type ping into the command prompt and look for the server response. Now, before we go any further, let's talk about how to actually store and retrieve values in Redis. Values are stored and retrieved in Redis using get and set. It should be noted that the set command replaces any existing value, even if the value is of a different data type. Also, there are options and configurations that can be supplied to the set and get commands, of which we will explore throughout this series. For example, we can retrieve, we can set and retrieve multiple keys with mset and mget. We can also check for the existence of a key in Redis using the exists command, which returns a zero or one to signal if a given key exists in the database. We can remove a key from Redis using the del command, which returns zero if the key doesn't exist, or one if it existed and was deleted. Finally, as Redis can store values for different data types, we can check the type of the stored value by using the type command. We can also create a time to live or expiration for a Redis key. When the TTL elapses, the key is destroyed. To set a key's expiration, we use the expire command. So we could see three seconds have passed. So when we get my expire key, we get return nil because it has expired. Or with expire, we can also check the time a key has remaining using the TTL command. But there we have it. So Redis is great for building high performance applications due to its memory storage and variety of data structures. I wanna thank you for liking and subscribing. And there is also a blog version of this video available on my website. We'll link in the description. But besides that, once again, thanks for watching and have a good one.